Caesarean Section, Wikipedia Article Audio Caesarean Section, also known as C-Section or Caesarean Delivery, is the use of surgery to deliver one or more babies. A caesarean section is often necessary when a vaginal delivery would put the baby or mother at risk. This may include obstructed labor, twin pregnancy, high blood pressure in the mother, breech birth, or problems with the placenta or umbilical cord. A caesarean delivery may be performed based upon the shape of the mother's pelvis or history of a previous C-section. A trial of vaginal birth after C-section may be possible. The World Health Organization recommends that caesarean section be performed only when medically necessary. Some C-sections are performed without a medical reason, upon request by someone, usually the mother. A C-section typically takes 45 minutes to an hour. It may be done with a spinal block where the woman is awake or under general anesthesia. A urinary catheter is used to drain the bladder and the skin of the abdomen is then cleaned with an antiseptic. An incision of about 15 cm is then typically made through the mother's lower abdomen. The uterus is then opened with a second incision and the baby delivered. The incisions are then stitched closed. A woman can typically begin breastfeeding as soon as she is awake and out of the operating room. Often a number of days are required in the hospital to recover sufficiently to return home. Uses Medical Uses C-sections result in a small overall increase in poor outcomes in low-risk pregnancies. They also typically take longer to heal from, about six weeks, than vaginal birth. The increased risks include breathing problems in the baby and amniotic fluid embolism and postpartum bleeding in the mother. Established guidelines recommend that caesarean sections not be used before 39 weeks of pregnancy without a medical reason. The method of delivery does not appear to have an effect on subsequent sexual function. In 2012, about 23 million C-sections were done globally. The international healthcare community has previously considered the rate of 10% and 15% to be ideal for caesarean sections. Some evidence finds a higher rate of 19% may result in better outcomes. More than 45 countries globally have C-section rates less than 7.5% while more than 50 have rates greater than 27%. There are efforts to both improve access to and reduce the use of C-section. In the United States, about 33% of deliveries are by C-section. The surgery has been performed at least as far back as 715 BC following the death of the mother with the occasional baby surviving. Descriptions of mothers surviving date back to the 1500s. With the introduction of antiseptics and anesthetics in the 1800s survival of both the mother and baby became common. Caesarean section is recommended when vaginal delivery might pose a risk to the mother or baby. C-sections are also carried out for personal and social reasons. Systematic reviews have found no strong evidence about the impact of caesareans for non-medical reasons. Recommendations encourage counseling to identify the reasons for the request, addressing anxieties, and information and encouraging vaginal birth. Elective caesareans at 38 weeks showed increased health complications in the newborn. For this reason, planned caesarean sections should not be scheduled before 39 weeks gestation unless there is a medical reason to do so. Complications of labor and factors increasing the risk associated with vaginal delivery, such as other complications of pregnancy, pre-existing conditions, and concomitant disease, such as Prevention Other 
It is generally agreed that the prevalence of caesarean section is higher than needed in many countries and physicians are encouraged to actively lower the rate, as a caesarean rate higher than 10 to 15 percent is not associated with reductions in maternal or infant mortality rates. Some evidence supports a higher rate of 19% may result in better outcomes. Risks Some of these efforts are, emphasizing a long latent phase of labor is not abnormal and not a justification for C-section, a new definition of the start of active labor from a cervical dilatation of 4 cm to a dilatation of 6 cm and allowing at least two hours of pushing for women who have previously given birth and three hours of pushing for women who have not previously given birth before labor arrest is considered. Physical exercise during pregnancy also decreases the risk. Adverse outcomes in low-risk pregnancies occur in 8.6% of vaginal deliveries and 9.2% of caesarean section deliveries. In those who are low risk, the risk of death for caesarean sections is 13 per 100,000 and for vaginal birth 3.5 per 100,000 in the developed world. The United Kingdom National Health Service gives the risk of death for the mother as three times that of a vaginal birth but it is important to remember the actual risk of death in either situation is extremely small in resource-rich settings. Mother. In Canada, the difference in serious morbidity or mortality for the mother was 1.8 additional cases per 100 or three times the risk. Subsequent Pregnancies A caesarean section is associated with risks of postoperative adhesions, incisional hernias, and wound infections. If a caesarean is performed in an emergency, the risk of the surgery may be increased due to a number of factors. The patient's stomach may not be empty, increasing the risk of anesthesia. Other risks include severe blood loss and postdural puncture spinal headaches. Adhesions Wound infections occur after caesarean sections at a rate of 3 to 15 percent. Women who had caesarean sections are more likely to have problems with later pregnancies, and it is recommended that women who want larger families should not seek an elective caesarean unless there are medical indications to do so. The risk of placenta accreta, a potentially life-threatening condition which is more likely to develop where a woman has had a previous caesarean section, is 0.13% after two caesarean sections but increases to 2.13% after 4 and then to 6.74% after 6 or more. Along with this is a similar rise in the risk of emergency hysterectomies at delivery. Child Mothers can experience an increased incidence of postnatal depression, and can experience significant psychological trauma and ongoing birth-related post-traumatic stress disorder after obstetric intervention during the birthing process. Factors like pain in the first stage of labor, feelings of powerlessness, intrusive emergency obstetric intervention are important in the subsequent development of psychological issues related to labor and delivery. Women who have had a caesarean for any reason are somewhat less likely to become pregnant again as compared to women who have previously delivered only vaginally, but the effect is small. Women who had just one previous caesarean section are more likely to have problems with their second birth. Delivery after previous caesarean section is by either of two main options. Both have higher risks than a vaginal birth with no previous caesarean section. There are many issues which must be taken into account when planning the mode of delivery for every pregnancy, not just those complicated by a previous caesarean section and there is a list of some of these issues in the list of indications for section in the first part of this article. A vaginal birth after caesarean section confers a higher risk of uterine rupture, blood transfusion, or endometritis, 
and perinatal death of the child. Furthermore, 20% to 40% of planned VBAC attempts end in cesarean section being needed, with greater risks of complications in an emergency repeat cesarean section than in an elective repeat cesarean section. On the other hand, VBAC confers less maternal morbidity and a decreased risk of complications in future pregnancies than elective repeat cesarean section. There are a number of steps that can be taken during abdominal or pelvic surgery to minimize postoperative complications, such as the formation of adhesions. Such techniques and principles may include Classification However, despite these proactive measures, adhesion formation is a recognized complication of any abdominal or pelvic surgery. To prevent adhesions from forming after caesarean section, adhesion barrier can be put during surgery to minimize the risk of adhesions between the uterus and ovaries, the small bowel, and almost any tissue in the abdomen or pelvis. This is not current UK practice though as there is no compelling evidence to support the benefit of this intervention. By urgency Adhesions can cause long-term problems, such as Abnormal presentation Babies are usually born head first. If the baby is in another position the birth may be complicated. In AA Eurobreach presentation a Euro trademark, the unborn baby is bottom down instead of head down. Babies born bottom first are more likely to be harmed during a normal birth than those born head first. For instance, the baby might not get enough oxygen during the birth. Having a planned caesarean may reduce these problems. A review looking at planned caesarean section for singleton breach presentation with planned vaginal birth, concludes that in the short term, Births with a planned caesarean were safer for babies than vaginal births. Fewer babies died or were seriously hurt when they were born by caesarean. However, there was tentative evidence that children who were born by caesarean had more health problems at age 2. Caesareans caused some short term problems for mothers, such as more abdominal pain. They also had some benefits such as less urinary incontinence and less perineal pain, prolonged labor or a failure to progress, fetal distress, cord prolapse, uterine rupture or an elevated risk thereof, hypertension in the mother or baby after amniotic rupture, tachycardia in the mother or baby after amniotic rupture, placenta problems, failed labor induction, failed instrumental delivery, large baby weighing 4,000 grams, umbilical cord abnormalities. The risk of adhesion formation is one reason why vaginal delivery is usually considered safer than elective caesarean section where there is no medical indication for section for either maternal or fetal reasons. Non-medically indicated childbirth before 39 weeks gestation carry significant risks for the baby with no known benefit to the mother. Complications from elective caesarean before 39 weeks include, newborn mortality at 37 weeks may be up to three times the number at 40 weeks, and was elevated compared to 38 weeks gestation. These a euro early term euro births were associated with more death during infancy, compared to those occurring at 39 to 41 weeks. Researchers in one study and another review found many benefits to going full term, but a euro no adverse effects a euro in the health of the mothers or babies. Preeclampsia, previous fetus, HIV infection of the mother with a high viral load sexually transmitted diseases, such as a first outbreak of genital herpes very recently before the onset of labor, previous classical caesarean section, previous uterine rupture, prior problems with the healing of the perineum, bicornuate uterus, 
rare cases of posthumous birth after the death of the mother. The American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and Medical Policy Makers review research studies and find more incidents of suspected or proven sepsis, RDS, hypoglycemia, need for respiratory support, need for NICU admission, and need for hospitalization for a euro five days. In the case of caesarean sections, rates of respiratory death were 14 times higher in pre-labor at 37 compared with 40 weeks gestation, and 8.2 times higher for pre-labor caesarean at 38 weeks. In this review, no studies found decreased neonatal morbidity due to non-medically indicated delivery before 39 weeks. By Characteristics of the Mother Caesarean Delivery on Maternal Request After Previous Caesarean Twins For otherwise healthy twin pregnancies where both twins are head down a trial of vaginal delivery is recommended at between 37 and 38 weeks. Vaginal delivery, in this case, does not worsen the outcome for either infant as compared with caesarean section. There is some controversy on the best method of delivery where the first twin is head first and the second is not, but most obstetricians will recommend normal delivery unless there are other reasons to avoid vaginal birth. When the first twin is not head down, a caesarean section is often recommended. Regardless of whether the twins are delivered by section or vaginally, the medical literature recommends delivery of dichorionic twins at 38 weeks, and monochorionic twins by 37 weeks due to the increased risk of stillbirth in monochorionic twins who remain in utero after 37 weeks. The consensus is that late preterm delivery of monochorionic twins is justified because the risk of stillbirth for post-37 week delivery is significantly higher than the risks posed by delivering monochorionic twins near term. The consensus concerning monoamniotic twins, the highest risk type of twins, is that they should be delivered by caesarean section at or shortly after 32 weeks since the risks of intrauterine death of one or both twins is higher after this gestation than the risk of complications of prematurity. Decreasing experience of accoucheurs with the management of the breech presentation a euro although obstetricians and midwives are extensively trained in proper procedures for breech presentation deliveries using simulation mannequins. There is decreasing experience with actual vaginal breach delivery which may increase the risk further. In a research study widely publicized, singleton children born earlier than 39 weeks may have developmental problems, including slower learning in reading and math. Other risks include Birth by caesarean section also seems to be associated with worse health outcomes later in life, including overweight or obesity and problems in the immune system. Vaginal birth after caesarean section, elective repeat caesarean section. Caesarean sections have been classified in various ways by different perspectives. One way to discuss all classification systems is to group them by their focus either on the urgency of the procedure, characteristics of the mother, or as a group based on other, less commonly discussed factors. It is most common to classify caesarean sections by the urgency of performing them. Conventionally, Caesarean sections are classified as being either an elective surgery or an emergency operation. Classification is used to help communication between the obstetric, midwifery and anesthetic team for discussion of the most appropriate method of anesthesia. The decision whether to perform general anesthesia or regional anesthesia is important and is based on many indications including how urgent the delivery needs to be as well as the medical and obstetric history of the woman. 
Regional anesthetic is almost always safer for the woman and the baby but sometimes general anesthetic is safer for one or both, and the classification of urgency of the delivery is an important issue affecting this decision. Breach birth A planned caesarean, arranged ahead of time, is most commonly arranged for medical indications which have developed before or during the pregnancy and ideally after 39 weeks of gestation. In the UK, this is classified as a grade 4 section or as a grade 3 section. Emergency caesarean sections are performed in pregnancies in which a vaginal delivery was planned initially, but an indication for caesarean delivery has since developed. In the UK they are further classified as grade 2 or grade 1. Elective caesarean sections may be performed on the basis of an obstetrical or medical indication, or because of a medically non-indicated maternal request. Among women in the United Kingdom, Sweden, and Australia, about 7% preferred caesarean section as a method of delivery. In cases without medical indications the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the UK Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommend a planned vaginal delivery. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence recommends that if after a woman has been provided information on the risk of a planned caesarean section and she still insists on the procedure it should be provided. If provided this should be done at 39 weeks of gestation or later. Caesarean delivery on maternal request is a medically unnecessary caesarean section, where the conduct of a childbirth via a caesarean section is requested by the pregnant patient even though there is not a medical indication to have the surgery. Resuscitative hysterotomy Other ways including by surgery technique. Technique Mothers who have previously had a caesarean section are more likely to have a caesarean section for future pregnancies than mothers who have never had a caesarean section. There is discussion about the circumstances under which women should have a vaginal birth after a previous caesarean. Vaginal birth after caesarean is the practice of birthing a baby vaginally after a previous baby has been delivered by caesarean section. According to the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, successful VBAC is associated with decreased maternal morbidity and a decreased risk of complications in future pregnancies. According to the American Pregnancy Association, 90% of women who have undergone caesarean deliveries are candidates for VBAC. Approximately 60 to 80% of women opting for VBAC will successfully give birth vaginally, which is comparable to the overall vaginal delivery rate in the United States in 2010. For otherwise healthy twin pregnancies where both twins are head down a trial of vaginal delivery is recommended at between 37 and 38 weeks. Vaginal delivery in this case does not worsen the outcome for either infant as compared with caesarean section. There is controversy on the best method of delivery where the first twin is head first and the second is not. When the first twin is not head down at the point of labor starting, a caesarean section should be recommended. Although the second twin typically has a higher frequency of problems, it is not known if a planned caesarean section affects this. It is estimated that 75% of twin pregnancies in the United States were delivered by caesarean section in 2008. A breech birth is the birth of a baby from a breech presentation, in which the baby exits the pelvis with the buttocks or feet first as opposed to the normal head first presentation. In breech presentation, fetal heart sounds are heard just above the umbilicus. The bottom down position presents some hazards to the baby during the process of birth and the mode of delivery is controversial in the fields of obstetrics and midwifery. Anesthesia 
Though vaginal birth is possible for the breech baby, certain fetal and maternal factors influence the safety of vaginal breech birth. The majority of breech babies born in the United States and the UK are delivered by cesarean section as studies have shown increased risks of morbidity and mortality for vaginal breech delivery, and most obstetricians counsel against planned vaginal breech birth for this reason. As a result of reduced numbers of actual vaginal breech deliveries, obstetricians and midwives are at risk of deskilling in this important skill. All those involved in delivery of obstetric and midwifery care in the UK undergo mandatory training in conducting breech deliveries in the simulation environment and this training is carried out regularly to keep skills up to date. A resuscitative hysterotomy, also known as a perimortem caesarean delivery, is an emergency caesarean delivery carried out where maternal cardiac arrest has occurred to assist in resuscitation of the mother by removing the aortocaval compression generated by the gravid uterus. Unlike other forms of caesarean section, the welfare of the fetus is a secondary priority only, and the procedure may be performed even prior to the limit of fetal viability if it is judged to be of benefit to the mother. There are several types of caesarean section. An important distinction lies in the type of incision made on the uterus, apart from the incision on the skin, the vast majority of skin incisions are a transverse suprapubic approach known as a pfannenstiel incision but there is no way of knowing from the skin scar which way the uterine incision was conducted. The exit procedure is a specialized surgical delivery procedure used to deliver babies who have airway compression. The Miskov Latich method is a modified caesarean section which has been used nearly all over the world since the 1990s. It was described by Michael Stark, the president of the New European Surgical Academy, at the time he was the director of Miskov Latich, a general hospital in Jerusalem. The method was presented during a FIGO conference in Montre Copyright Al in 1994 and then distributed by the University of Uppsala, Sweden, in more than 100 countries. This method is based on minimalistic principles. He examined all steps in caesarean sections in use, analyzed them for their necessity and, if found necessary, for their optimal way of performance. For the abdominal incision he used the modified Joel Cohen incision and compared the longitudinal abdominal structures to strings on musical instruments. As blood vessels and muscles have lateral sway, it is possible to stretch rather than cut them. The peritoneum is opened by repeat stretching, no abdominal swabs are used, the uterus is closed in one layer with a big needle to reduce the amount of foreign body as much as possible, the peritoneal layers remain unsutured and the abdomen is closed with two layers only. Women undergoing this operation recover quickly and can look after the newborn soon after surgery. There are many publications showing the advantages over traditional caesarean section methods. However, there is an increased risk of abruptio placenti and uterine rupture in subsequent pregnancies for women who underwent this method in prior deliveries. Antibiotic prophylaxis is used before an incision. The uterus is incised, and this incision is extended with blunt pressure along a cephalad caudat axis. The infant is delivered, and the placenta is then removed. The surgeon then makes a decision about uterine exteriorization. Single-layer uterine closure is used when the mother does not want a future pregnancy. When subcutaneous tissue is 2 cm thick or more, surgical suture is used. Discouraged practices include manual cervical dilation, any subcutaneous drain or supplemental oxygen therapy with intent to prevent infection. Caesarean section can be performed with single or double layer suturing of the uterine incision. 
single layer closure compared with double layer closure has been observed to result in reduced blood loss during the surgery. It is uncertain whether this is the direct effect of the suturing technique or if other factors such as the type and site of abdominal incision contribute to reduced blood loss. Standard procedure includes the closure of the peritoneum. However, research questions this may not be needed, with some studies indicating peritoneal closure is associated with longer operative time and hospital stay. The miscave lattice method is a surgery technical that may have fewer secondary complications and faster healing, due to the insertion into the muscle. In many hospitals, the mother's partner is encouraged to attend the surgery to support the mother and share the experience. The anesthetist will usually lower the drape temporarily as the child is delivered so the parents can see their newborn. Both general and regional anesthesia are acceptable for use during caesarean section. Evidence does not show a difference between regional anesthesia and general anesthesia with respect to major outcomes in the mother or baby. Regional anesthesia may be preferred as it allows the mother to be awake and interact immediately with her baby. Other advantages of regional anesthesia may include the absence of typical risks of general anesthesia, pulmonary aspiration of gastric contents and esophageal intubation. However, one trial found no difference in satisfaction when general anesthesia was compared with either spinal anesthesia. Regional anesthesia is used in 95% of deliveries with spinal and combined spinal and epidural anesthesia being the most commonly used regional techniques in scheduled caesarean section. Regional anesthesia during caesarean section is different from the analgesia used in labor and vaginal delivery. The pain that is experienced because of surgery is greater than that of labor and therefore requires a more intense nerve block. Prevention of Complications Recovery General anesthesia may be necessary because of specific risks to mother or child. Patients with heavy, uncontrolled bleeding may not tolerate the hemodynamic effects of regional anesthesia. General anesthesia is also preferred in very urgent cases, such as severe fetal distress, when there is no time to perform a regional anesthesia. Postpartum infection is one of the main causes of maternal death and may account for 10% of maternal deaths globally. Caesarean section greatly increases the risk of infection and associated morbidity, and routine use of antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent infections is recommended. Infection can occur in around 8% of women who have caesareans, largely endometritis urinary tract infections and wound infections. The use of preventative antibiotics in women undergoing caesarean section decreased wound infection, endometritis, and serious infectious complications by about 65%. Side effects and effect on the baby is unclear. Usage Women who have caesareans can recognize the signs of fever that indicate the possibility of wound infection. Taking antibiotics before skin incision rather than after cord clamping reduces the risk for the mother, without increasing adverse effects for the baby. Whether a particular type of skin cleaner improves outcomes is unclear. Increasing use Epidemiology History Caesarius of Terracina Society and Culture Etymology Spelling Special Cases Some doctors believe that during a caesarean section, mechanical cervical dilation with a finger or forceps will prevent the obstruction of blood and lochia drainage and thereby benefit the mother by reducing the risk of death. The available clinical evidence is not sufficient to draw a conclusion on the effect of this practice. 
it is common for women who undergo cesarean section to have reduced or absent bowel movements for hours to days. During this time, women may experience abdominal cramps, nausea, and vomiting. This usually resolves without treatment. Abdominal, wound and back pain can continue for months after a cesarean section. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be helpful. Women who have had a cesarean are more likely to experience pain that interferes with their usual activities than women who have vaginal births, although by six months there is generally no longer a difference. However, Pain during sexual intercourse is less likely than after vaginal birth, although again, by six months there is no difference. There may be a somewhat higher incidence of postnatal depression in the first weeks after childbirth for women who have caesarean sections, but this difference does not persist. Some women who have had caesarean sections, especially emergency caesareans, experience post-traumatic stress disorder. In Italy, the incidence of caesarean sections is particularly high, although it varies from region to region. In Campania, 60% of 2008 births reportedly occurred via duct caesarean sections. In the Rome region, the mean incidence is around 44%, but can reach as high as 85% in some private clinics. With nearly 1.3 million stays, caesarean section was one of the most common procedures performed in U.S. hospitals in 2011. It was the second most common procedure performed for people ages 18 to 44 years old. Caesarean rates in the U.S. have risen considerably since 1996. The procedure increased 60% from 1996 to 2009. In 2010, the caesarean delivery rate was 32.8% of all births. A study found that in 2011, women covered by private insurance were 11% more likely to have a caesarean section delivery than those covered by Medicaid. China has been cited as having the highest rates of C-sections in the world at 46% as of 2008. Studies have shown that continuity of care with a known carer may significantly decrease the rate of caesarean delivery but there is also research that appears to show that there is no significant difference in caesarean rates when comparing midwife continuity care to conventional fragmented care. More emergency caesarean sa euro about 66% a euro are performed during the day rather than during the night. The rate has risen to 46% in China and to levels of 25% and above in many Asian, European and Latin American countries. The rate has increased in the United States, to 33% of all births in 2012 up from 21% in 1996. Across Europe, there are differences between countries, in Italy the caesarean section rate is 40%, while in the Nordic countries it is 14%. In Brazil and Iran the caesarean section rate is greater than 40%. In the United States, C-section rates have increased from just over 20% in 1996 to 33% in 2011. This increase has not resulted in improved outcomes resulting in the position that C-sections may be done too frequently. The World Health Organization officially withdrew its previous recommendation of a 15% C-section rate in June 2010. Their official statement read, there is no empirical evidence for an optimum percentage. What matters most is that all women who need caesarean sections receive them. Speculation explaining a relationship between birth weight and maternal pelvis size has been proposed. The explanation, based on Darwinian-inspired logic, 
states that since the advent of successful caesarean birth more mothers with small pelvises and babies with large birth weights survive. This hypothesis would predict an increased average birth weight, which has been observed. It is unclear what component contributes more to this effect, evolution or environment. Brazil is one of the countries with the highest caesarean section rate in the world with rates in the public sector averages 35 euro 45% while the private sector rate is as high as 80 to 90%. Global rates of caesarean section rates are increasing. In the United Kingdom, in 2008, the caesarean section rate was 24%. In Ireland the rate was 26.1% in 2009. The Canadian rate was 26% in 2005 Euro 2006. Australia has a high caesarean section rate, at 31% in 2007. In the United States the rate of C-section is around 33% and varies from 23% to 40% depending on the state in question. One out three women who gave birth in the U.S. delivered by cesarean in 2011. In 2012, close to 23 million C-sections were done globally in 2012. At one time the rate of 10% and 15% were thought to be ideal. A higher rate of 19% may result in better outcomes. More than 50 nations have rates greater than 27%. Another 45 countries have rates less than 7.5% There are efforts to both improve access to and reduce the use of C-section. In the United States about 33% of deliveries are by C-section. The rates in the UK and Australia are 26.5% and 32.3% respectively. In China, the most recent CS rate reported was 41%. Globally, 1% of all caesarean deliveries are done without the medical need for one. Overall the rate of caesarean section rate was 25.7% during 2004-2008. Wound infections occur after caesarean sections at a rate of 3-15%. Some women are at greater risk for developing a surgical site infection after delivery. The presence of chorioamnionitis and obesity predisposes the woman to develop a surgical site infection. The mother of Bindu Sara, the second Mauryan Samrat of India, accidentally consumed poison and died when she was close to delivering him. Chanakya, the Chandragupta's teacher and advisor, made up his mind that the baby should survive. He cut open the belly of the queen and took out the baby, thus saving the baby's life. According to the ancient Chinese records of the Grand Historian, Luzhong, a sixth-generation descendant of the Yellow Emperor, had six sons, all born by cutting open the body. The sixth son Jillian founded the House of Mi that ruled the state of Chu. In the Irish mythological text The Ulster Cycle, the character Furbade Furbend is said to have been born by posthumous caesarean section, after his mother was murdered by his evil aunt Medb. The Babylonian Talmud, an ancient Jewish religious text, mentions a procedure similar to the Caesarean section. The procedure is termed Yatsi Dofen. It also discusses at length the permissibility of performing a C-section on a dying or dead mother. Pliny the Elder theorized that Julius Caesar's name came from an ancestor who was born by Caesarean section, but the truth of this is debated. The ancient Roman caesarean section was first performed to remove a baby from the womb of a mother who died during childbirth. Julius Caesar's mother, Aurelia, lived through childbirth and successfully gave birth to her son, ruling out the possibility the Roman ruler and general was born by caesarean section. 
His first wife, however, died in childbirth, giving birth to a stillborn son who might have lived had a caesarean taken place. The Catalan Saint Raymond non natus, received his surname a euro from the Latin non natus a euro because he was born by caesarean section. His mother died while giving birth to him. An early account of Caesarean section in Iran is mentioned in the Book of Shahnameh, written around 1000 AD, and relates to the birth of Rustam, the national legendary hero of Iran. According to the Shahnameh, the Symurg instructed Zal upon how to perform a Caesarean section, thus saving Rudaba and the child Rustam. Caesarean section usually resulted in the death of the mother. In an account from the 1580s, in Siegershausen, Switzerland, Jacob Neufer a pig gelder, is supposed to have performed the operation on his wife after a prolonged labor. However, there is also some basis for supposing that Jewish women regularly survived the operation in Roman times. For most of the time since the 16th century, the procedure had a high mortality rate. However, it was long considered an extreme measure, performed only when the mother was already dead or considered to be beyond help. In Great Britain and Ireland, the mortality rate in 1865 was 85%. Key steps in reducing mortality were European travelers in the Great Lakes region of Africa during the 19th century observed caesarean sections being performed on a regular basis. The expectant mother was normally anesthetized with alcohol, and herbal mixtures were used to encourage healing. From the well-developed nature of the procedures employed, European observers concluded they had been employed for some time. James Berry carried out the first successful caesarean by a European doctor in Africa in Cape Town, while posted there between 1817 and 1828. The first successful caesarean section to be performed in America took place in Mason County, Virginia, in 1794. The procedure was performed by Dr. Jesse Bennett on his wife Elizabeth. On March 5, 2000, in Mexico, Ina Copyright S. Ramirez performed a caesarean section on herself and survived, as did her son, Orlando Ruiz Ramirez. The patron saint of caesarean section is Cesarias of Africa, a young deacon martyred at Terracina who has replaced and Christianized the pagan figure of Caesar. The martyr is invoked for the good success of this surgical procedure. The Roman Lex Regia, later the Lex Caesarea, of Numa Pompilius, required the child of a mother dead in childbirth to be cut from her womb. There was a cultural taboo that mothers not be buried pregnant, that may have reflected a way of saving some fetuses. Roman practice requiring a living mother to be in her tenth month of pregnancy before resorting to the procedure, reflecting the knowledge that she could not survive the delivery. Speculation that the Roman dictator Julius Caesar was born by the method now known as C-section is apparently false. Although Caesarian sections were performed in Roman times, no classical source records a mother surviving such a delivery. As late as the 12th century, scholar and physician Maimonides expresses doubt over the possibility of a woman's surviving this procedure and again falling pregnant. The term has also been explained as deriving from the verb cedir, to cut, with children delivered this way referred to as sessones. Pliny the Elder refers to a certain Julius Caesar as a butero sesso cut from the womb giving this as an explanation for the cognomen Caesar which was then carried by his descendants. Nonetheless, even if the etymological hypothesis linking the Caesarian section to Julius Caesar is a false etymology, it has been widely believed. 
For example, the Oxford English Dictionary defines caesarean birth as the delivery of a child by cutting through the walls of the abdomen when delivery cannot take place in the natural way, as was done in the case of Julius Caesar. Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary leaves room for etymological uncertainty with the phrase, from the legendary association of such a delivery with the Roman cognomen Caesar. Some link with Julius Caesar or with Roman emperors exists in other languages as well. For example, the modern German, Norwegian, Danish, Dutch, Swedish, Turkish and Hungarian terms are respectively Kaisersnit, Kaisersnit, Ketchersnit, Kiesersnit, Ketchersnit, Caesarian, and CSA Sarmitsa copyright S. The German term has also been imported into Japanese and Korean, both literally meaning emperor incision. Similarly, in Western Slavic CIA trademark CIE Caesarski, CASAA trademark SKA one half A trademark EZ and SISA RSKY RES means emperor's cut, whereas the South Slavic term is Serbian and degree N Euro and degree N Euro and Slovenian CARSKI RA copyright Z, literally Tsar S cut. The Russian term Kesareva Sicini Y literally means Caesar's section. The Arabic term also means Caesarian birth. The Hebrew term times times trademark times 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 trademark times 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 trademark translates literally as caesarean surgery. In Romania and Portugal, it is usually called caesariana, meaning from Caesar. According to Shahnameh ancient Persian book, the hero Rustam was the first person who was born with this method and term plus or minus superscript 3u. U is corresponded to Caesarian. Also, Hindu mythical monkey god Hanuman was born through a similar procedure on his mother and Jani. Finally, the Roman prenomen Seso was said to be given to children who were born via C-section. While this was probably just folk etymology made popular by Pliny the Elder, it was well known by the time the term came into common use. The term caesarean is spelled in various accepted ways, as discussed at Wiktionary. The medical subject headings of the United States National Library of Medicine uses caesarean section, while some other American medical works, e.g. Saunders' Comprehensive Veterinary Dictionary, use caesarean, as do most British works. The online versions of the US published Merriam-Webster Dictionary and American Heritage Dictionary list Caesarian first and other spellings as variants, an etymologically and historical position. In Judaism, there is a dispute among the Poskim as to whether the firstborn son from a Caesarian section has the laws of a Besher. Traditionally, a male child delivered by caesarean is not eligible for the Pidayan Haven dedication ritual. In rare cases, caesarean sections can be used to remove a dead fetus. A late-term abortion using caesarean section procedures is termed a hysterotomy abortion and is very rarely performed. Self-inflicted caesarean section is the concept of a mother alone performing her own caesarean section. There have apparently been a few successful cases, notably Ina Copyright S. Ramirez Pa Copyright Res of Mexico who in March 2000, performed a successful caesarean section on herself. Wet lung, retention of fluid in the lungs can occur if not expelled by the pressure of contractions during labor, potential for early delivery and complications. Preterm delivery may be inadvertently carried out if the due date calculation is inaccurate. One study found an increased complication risk if a repeat elective caesarean section is performed even a few days before the recommended 39 weeks, higher infant mortality risk, in caesarean sections performed with no indicated medical risk, 
the risk of death in the first 28 days of life has been cited as 1.77 per 1,000 live births among women who had caesarean sections, compared to 0.62 per 1,000 for women who delivered vaginally. The classical caesarean section involves a midline incision on the uterus longitudinal incision which allows a larger space to deliver the baby. It is performed at very early gestations where the lower segment of the uterus is unformed as it is safer in this situation for the baby, but it is rarely performed other than at these early gestations, as the operation is more prone to complications than a low transverse uterine incision. Any woman who has had a classical section will be recommended to have an elective repeat section in subsequent pregnancies as the vertical incision is much more likely to rupture in labor than the transverse incision, the lower uterine segment section is the procedure most commonly used today, it involves a transverse cut just above the edge of the bladder. It results in less blood loss and has fewer early and late complications for the mother as well as allowing her to consider a vaginal birth in the next pregnancy, a caesarean hysterectomy consists of a caesarean section followed by the removal of the uterus. This may be done in cases of intractable bleeding or when the placenta cannot be separated from the uterus. Introduction of the transverse incision technique to minimize bleeding by Ferdinand Adolf Kerrer in 1881 is thought to be first modern CS performed, the introduction of uterine suturing by Max S. Anger in 1882, modification by Hermann Johannes Pfannenstiel in 1900, C. Pfannenstiel incision, extraperitoneal CS and then moving to low transverse incision adherence to principles of asepsis, anesthesia advances, blood transfusion, antibiotics. <laughs>